right? And what you feel, provided one is satisfied with Allah's uh, predestination, I mean, this is a condition. When you speak about that, you just, you're not complaining from Allah, subhanahu You're not uh, actually uh, dissatisfied, but you're, you're permissible to say that as we are going to know from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu himself, he did it, Sallallahu and he spoke about his, <coughs> his pain, his uh, illness, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also complaining of one's illness to Allah and asking him for recovery does by no means contradict, contradict patients. Like you complain uh, to Allah, not from Allah. Yaqub he said, I complain my grief, my grief, my sorrow to Allah Azza wa right? So this is one of the ibadat, to just complain your, your weakness and your illness to Allah Azza wa telling him that as you السلام, said, Rabbi inni masani al-turru wa ant arhamu rahmeen, O my Lord, uh, I was touched by the distress and you are the most merciful. He said it doesn't contradict patience. This is a very important point. Some, some people think, you know, in order to be patient, he doesn't have to say anything at all. He actually goes extreme. And he doesn't know the limits of patience and what is the real patience and what is not. And the, and the real patience is not to say anything Haram, like people say, Oh Allah, why did you choose me? Why only me? Why me? Everybody else is okay, and only me I have uh, such problems in my life or diseases. So, this is actually against patience, right? And this is completely haram. But to just, you know, say as a you are Islam said, Huh? This is a big, actually, ibadah, a big ibadah. And Ayyub didn't say, oh Allah, you have uh, afflicted me. He said, inni masaniya shaytanu bunusbin wa'adam. He knows it is from Allah. But out of his politeness, he didn't say, oh Allah, you caused me to be sick. He said, oh Allah, shaytan, shaytan, he caused me, right, to uh, to be in this torture. Bunusbin uh, wa'adam, in this uh, tiredness and exhaustion and and, and uh, torture. Um, and he said, on the contrary, it is desirable. It is what desirable, something preferable, and highly recommended in Islam to complain to Allah and ask Him for recovery, because you show Allah your weakness. So it is ibadah. It is ibadah to complain to Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? So, subhanAllah, he said, Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, for example, called to his Lord as revealed by Allah in the Quran, saying, uh, saying, Rabbi inni masaniya shir, inni masaniya durru wa anta arhamu rahimeen. Another uh, ayah, indeed, adversity has touched me, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. You are the most merciful of the merciful. So, this is a It's a big ibadah to complain, to complain to Allah Azza wa Jal, to Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, and the Prophet Sallallahu in this hadith, which was classified as, as Hassan by some of the scholars, some of them said it's acceptable. When he said, when he was coming back from al Ta'if, he said, Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'afa quwati wa qillata hilati. Oh Allah, I am I'm, I'm complaining to you the weakness of my strength, right? Uh, and the incapability of my power. I'm not able to do anything. SubhanAllah. Uh, this is also one of the uh, evidences that you complain to Allah is a big ibadah. It's a big ibadah to complain to Allah to say, Oh Allah, I'm so weak. Oh Allah, I need you to protect me from the evil of my souls and to ask Allah to guide you. 
not only to ask Allah to uh, grant you shifa of your uh, physical diseases, but also from the diseases of the heart, the spiritual diseases. You ask Allah to guide you to uh, rectify your affairs, to ask Allah to grant you a sound heart, to protect you from the evils and from the sins. You complain to Allah uh, about your sins. Oh Allah, I have sins, I cannot get rid of my sins, I cannot quit. So, oh Allah, I ask you to help me uh, quit my sins, and I ask you to help me get rid of these, these actually uh, sins that I cannot uh, leave them in my life. So, you ask Allah Azza wa uh, constantly with humiliation, and you put yourself down in front of your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you show him that you are weak and he is and he is so powerful and you are poor and he is all rich and you show him he is al ghaniyu and al faqir oh Allah anta al ghaniyu wa ana al faqir ilayk and you say oh Allah anta al qawiyu wa ana al da'if anta al qawiyu wa ana al da'if you are the all powerful and I am all weak and you ask Allah Azza wa Jal by his names and qualities and you ask Allah by your weakness, right? And by your flaws, oh Allah, I'm, you know, uh, doing all of the sins, right? And you are the one who forgives, so uh, uh, forgive me. And moreover, uh, there is no harm in receiving lawful medical treatment. This is another point that he mentioned. You actually are allowed to do all of these things, to complain to Allah and to even tell people about your illness, said there is no harm to go and seek um, uh, the uh, medical, but he said the lawful, the lawful medical treatment, because some people they go beyond the, the limits of Allah and go and seek the unlawful medical treatment. Uh, he's gonna come down to speak about it. This is a big issue, right? When it comes to the treatment, medical treatment has actual restrictions in Islam. He said some scholars strongly recommend resorting to a lawful medication to the degree that it seems to be obligatory. Now another point, do uh, or you can say do you have or does a, a, a sick person have to seek the medical treatment, right? Is it obligatory upon him if he is sick or not? He said some scholars um, went to say it is an obligatory upon him. It is actually obligatory upon the sick the sick person to seek the medical treatment. That means he would be sinful if he uh, doesn't do that, right? So this is because there are many hadith uh, stress, uh, stressing stressing adopting a reasonable means to reach an end and seeking medical treatment when necessary. For this doesn't contradict one's uh, reliance on Allah Azza wa and trust in Him. Here again, he tries to now remove these misconceptions. Because we have witnessed some people, they don't go to doctors, and they say, they say you know what? We rely on Allah, Allah is the one who gives shifa, and that's it. So mystically, thinking that is actually tawakkul. Now they trust Allah more than anybody else. Not knowing these hadith, that, that's why we say Islam is so comprehensive and the lack of understanding Islam as a whole causes whatever we see in our life, causes people to tarnish Islam, to tarnish the image of Islam, to actually be fitna for the disbelievers. They would say, guys, you don't care about your bodies, you don't care about the technology, um, because who has given us the knowledge of this medical treatment, Allah Azza wa Jal, right? So, he said, uh, that doesn't contradict uh, one's uh, tawakkul, right? And trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. It's just like satisfying hunger and thirst by means of food and drink. When you are hungry, when you are thirsty, what do you do? You say, oh, just oh Allah give me food and or just oh Allah make me you know, quench my thirst, and you don't go and drink, 
So even those people who don't seek the medical treatment, they contradict themselves. So if you if you if you are hungry and you go and eat, they cannot uh, uh, defend their uh, argument, huh? right? He said here, <clears throat> uh, yet it's not permissible to use uh, prohibited things. Now he didn't actually uh, break it down here. Let's let me just break it down for you. Is it obligatory or not? I don't know if he's going to mention that. Uh, I think he didn't mention that. Is it obligatory or not to seek the treatment, the medical treatment? Um, if you know for sure this is actually has been experienced, um, this medicine is a reason for you to recover, so then you have to take it. You have to take it. Like with the, the doctors or the physicians, they said to you, most likely this is the treatment of the disease, right? And most of those who have been, you know, touched by this disease got cured by this medicine. So now it's an obligatory upon you to seek means, right? This is brief. But if something actually not certain, right, whether you take it or not, like some people, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, grant us al-afiyah, may Allah, you know, uh, save all of us from all the diseases, some people, they might, subhanAllah, get cancer. And then they would be told that you just take the uh, chemo. So the the possibility for them to be to get cured is is not that certain because some people die even after they get that chemo and some and it depends on the degree of the cancer right and the severity of it in their bodies so <clears throat> so they might you know say you know what uh, I don't have to take it because or again it's not something proven. Or it's pain, the pain that you might be touched through the, med, the, 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 the medical treatment is even so great, is unbearable, right? That's why the Prophet Sallam, he allowed his nation to use the uh, Al-Kay. Al-Kay is the, uh, using the, uh, what do you call, the, 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 the like burning, there's a word for it. It is, it's only allowed, right? Uh, uh, but he did it for some of the Sahaba, right? For Sa'ad, radiallahu uh, anhu, and he did it for him. Uh, so, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ayr, Sa'ad ibn Mu'ayr, he, he got actually injured in one of the battles, so uh, he did it for, for him. Uh, so, but he's, he didn't, you know, prefer that for his woman. Also, he made it one of the, subhanAllah, reasons for those who would enter Jannah without any punishment. He said, when he was asked, he said, هُمُ الَّذِينَ لَا يَرْقُونَ لَا يَسْتَرْقُونَ وَلَا يَتَطَيِّرُونَ وَلَا يَكْتَوُونَ وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمَ تُوَكِّلُونَ when he was asked about those who will be in Jannah without any punishment, will enter Jannah or for the first blush, said those who don't actually ask others for ruqya, they don't ask for ruqya. It's not haram to ask for ruqya, but it's not preferable to ask for ruqya. Right? And from the same, actually, from the same, uh, you can say, kind of ruqya is dua. It's not preferable to ask for dua in the, in the world of the dunya, yani in the world of the, you know, uh, uh, requests for akhirah yes it's okay and also those who so you, you you ask somebody to make dua for you it's okay it's permissible right in the dunya uh, uh, you ask him to make dua for you to succeed this test or this exam or you know to get uh, something from the dunya it's okay but it's not preferable but to ask him to for something in the akhirah for jannah make dua for me to enter jannah it is preferable it's okay it, 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 it wouldn't uh, kick you out of the group who will be uh, given any punishment. And those who they don't actually use the bad omen. They don't depend on the bad omen, right? And the people used to do that before, right? Allah said, oh no, 
my day is not good today. Why? Because I saw this color in the morning. What does that mean to see a color, a specific color, okay, will make your day bad? Or you see somebody, right? Or, or you see a bird. If you see an owl, the owl is a symbol of a bad day, right? SubhanAllah. So this is actually, of course, this is haram. And then, and those, and those, and, and those who don't uh, categorize. So this is another reason for them, not because it's haram, but because it's not preferable. Why? Because it contradicts the complete, the complete trust in Allah. The complete, not the basic, the complete trust in Allah. Right? Because you harm yourself to get treated. You harm yourself so badly. Right? To get treated is not something good. So, again, this is actually in brief. Uh, right? He said, yet it's not permissible for to use prohibited things for medical treatment. Why? Because again, from the same, you know, reason, or because of the same reason, because you now contradict, uh, it contradicts the tawakkul. You seek the haram, the prohibited uh, means to get treated uh, for, like, this is something haram and it's not permissible. According to what is related in Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, that Ibn, Ibn Mas'ud said, uh, he said uh, this hadith, إن الله لم يجعل شفاءكم فيما حرم عليكم. He said what? The Prophet uh, said, uh, this is from Ibn Mas'ud and also was traceable to the Prophet Sallam and other narration. Allah has never made your remedy in what He has prohibited for you. Allah has never made your remedy that from his own self. So he had to have, you know, uh, heard that from the Prophet This hadith is actually traceable. I mean, it has been said by the Prophet He said what? Abu Rayra said, the Prophet said, Allah has sent down both disease and cure. In Allah anzalat da'a wa anzalat dawa. وَجَعْلَ لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ دَوَاءٍ وَلَا تَتَدَاوَ بِحَرَامٍ Allah has sent down both disease and cure. And He has appointed a cure for every disease. So, treat yourselves medically, medically, but use nothing prohibited. Look at this hadith. This is actually a miracle. It's a miracle. Because now we know, because of this hadith and others, as He said, لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ دَوَاءٍ Sam. What is the Sam? said every single disease Allah has made for it, Allah has created for it the cure, except a Sam, which is what? A note. A note doesn't have a cure. But that actually opened the door for the scholars and the scientists to search for the uh, remedy and for the cure of all the diseases, because we know that. Every single disease, no matter what. And he said, Alimahu man alima wa jahilahu man jahila. Who, uh, you know, uh, whoever knows it, knows it. And whoever doesn't, doesn't. SubhanAllah. But he actually made it like that, subhanahu wa ta'ala, on earth. Huh? So, 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 uh, so in addition, it's stated in Sahih Muslim now, uh, that when the Prophet Sallallahu was asked about using an intoxicant as remedy, he replied, what did he say? Now he was asked about khamr, al khamr, wine, right? Um, is it a means? Is it again? Is the means for us to get cured? He said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's not a remedy; it is a malady." Subhanallah. The opposite of remedy is what is a malady, right? It is not actually a cure. It is itself. A, it's in of itself a disease. It's a disease, right? Even if you think it will, it will, it will cure you. No, he said. إنها ليست ليس بدواء ولكنه داء. So a dawa, something good, right? The cure. A da is a disease. He said no, it's not actually a dawa. It is a da. It's a disease itself. It's a malady itself. So it is not something right. Even if you think it might help, it's not going to help. It's not going to help, right? Uh, Actually, this is another actually a chapter we can talk about that you know you know long uh, for a long actually time and for a huge lecture, but we want actually focus on this chapter. 
because uh, many questions now have arised, right? Uh, many questions have, you know, arisen about the issues of using the uh, prohibited, you know, ways to get treated, right? Uh, he said, uh, also, likewise, it's prohibited to use whatever might affect the correctness of one's creed, aqidah, as a remedy, such as wearing amulets, you know, the amulets people, you know, use, containing uh, polytheistic words, uh, superstitious uh, names, this, ha this has to do with magic, and right? Uh, non non uh, 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 what do you call and and like kind of you know uh, unclear um, writings, something even is un uh, like it's not uh, understood and it's not understandable, not understandable, right? Uh, some words together doesn't make any sense. Like if you if you look to this word or these words, you see it, they don't make any sense. So and the like, he said it's haram to do that. This is also haram. So that so then the, the, the means have its own limits. Not any means is okay. <clears throat> Not any means is okay. The means has to be, as he mentioned, lawful means, right? <clears throat> so we cannot in brief we cannot use the intoxicant, cannot use the uh, any haram uh, <clears throat> drinks or anything haram uh, to treat ourselves we cannot use uh, things which 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 might harm the aqidah right affect on the aqidah like people go to the you know subhanallah magicians and they go to those who use magic to treat themselves or go to those who actually have a connection with the devils right and devils can make Operation surgery or no? We have a doctor here, so he can tell us. Have you ever seen a a, a, a devil in, like working as a surgery, as a surgeon, like working to make surgery as uh, surgeries? Actually, the answer is it might be. Jinn, they are like human beings. They have all the all the fields. Like if you if you if you want to see, يعني, Subhanallah, يعني, uh, debate that why not? Yes, they might do surgeries. They might do that, right? Subhanallah, and they learn. They learn from human beings. They learn, right? So, uh, so it's okay, but still, it's not it's not it's not it's not right. We're not supposed to like uh, seek their help. Why? The Prophet ﷺ, one of the battles, Battle of Al-Ahzab, the trenches, he needed somebody to go and know the news, huh? um, what's going on on the other side of the Mushrikeen, right? Did he ask the jinn to go? Who was actually easier? To send somebody from the humans, he might be actually killed, he might get killed over there, right? It was so tough situation, even they couldn't go to answer the call of nature, right? So. And it was so cold, and they were like, Subhanallah, يعني, so scared to go anywhere. And even he, he kept on repeating, who, who can go and bring news from the other side, and he will be given Jannah, and nobody stood up. And then he appointed somebody, who well, put it home. Huh? He appointed somebody, who is it? He said, Qumya, stand up, oh, Hudayfa. Qumya Hudayfa. Hudayfa said, Allah, after he said my name, I had no other option. I had to stand up and he went out to see that, right? But if it, had it been permissible for him Islam, to seek the help from jinn, because he had a connection with, with them uh, in, 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 in the way of da'wah, as Allah said in Surah Al-Jinn, Allah sent to him jinn to listen to the Quran and they asked him, right, questions, right? The jinn spoke to him. He yes, said, Allah, what's our food? He said, you will have every single bones of human beings, uh, bones that human beings uh, ate, like sheep or camels or whatever they eat, like cows, whatever. And if they mention Allah's name, it would become for you full of meat again, right? So they asked him questions. I'm just telling you what uh, the conversation was about. They asked him questions and he answered them. But did he ask them for help? Never, never, right? 
So we cannot use gin. We cannot use gin at all. It's not one of, it's not one of the means. It's not one of the means for us to seek help. Never. You can ask them about the stolen things that people do. They go to gin to ask, okay, somebody stole my money, I don't know who is this person, they go to Nushra. Huh? And they go to the jinn and jinn, you know, subhanallah, he tell them, yes, your money got stolen by this person or that person or subhanallah, this and that. Tell him because the jinn, he, might, he, he, he can get the news easily, right? So it's not permissible. It's not permissible to do that, right? This is not one of the means. Haram. This open the door for shirk. Open the door for shirk, right? Because this is from the unseen, unseen, right? It's also prohibited to wear uh, beads, strings, earrings, or uh, pendants on one's arm. People do that right now. We see people like wearing, subhanAllah, uh, these uh, uh, earrings and, uh, and the like, right? And amulets and all of this. See an upper, uh, and also they put that in their upper arm or, or elsewhere with kind of belief, not just to decorate themselves like women, it's okay for girls, right? To wear uh, what they call earrings or it's okay, but they, but they wear strings, the string, why? Because they believe, you see those, right? So, and they say, oh, it's actually, it's gonna bring to me what? Good luck. Huh? Say to him, good luck, man, your iman is gone. Huh? Good luck. Because now you depend on something. He would say to you, he would uh, argue. He would say, no, no, it's one of the means. I don't believe it's gonna give me itself a good luck it's a, it's from allah Azzajal. but this is a means as you go to seek treatment you get, he, he would actually argue with you he would say do you believe this medicine would give you shifa or allah he would say no allah will give me shifa so why do you take the medicine he would say to him because it's a means of shifa he say okay likewise i don't believe these amulets would bring to me any good luck or, or, or these strings it is from allah but this is all a means how would you respond to that? You got the point? You got the question? No, I Okay. Now, you go and you say to those who use amulets, right, to, to bring to themselves good luck, right? They, they wear uh, these uh, earrings or strings, and when you ask them, why do you do that, it's not right? They would say to you, they would argue by saying, no, it's, we don't believe it is actually giving us shifa or good luck, but we believe it's a means to get a good luck. And he would mention to you another example. He would say to you, don't you take medicine when you get sick? You would say what, yes or no? Yes, he would say to you, do you believe Medicine itself brings to you shifa or Allah? You would say Allah. He would say to you, why do you take medicine? It's a, means. it's a means. And he would say to you, okay, likewise, I also wear these amulets as a means. So why, why not? This is a question. Why is it not right still? Hmm. hmm? Okay, you're almost there. Who knows? Who can, who can actually uh, say something else? Huh? Okay, in brief, okay. In brief, we have only two, two kinds of means. To what? Two permissible kinds of means. The first is this means or these kind of means which are told to us by the revelation by Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah said, this actually cures you. So we know it is a cure by Allah Azza wa Jal. Like what? The like Quran. Allah said, Quran is shifa, right? Okay. Like black, the, the black seed, black seed oil, right? Like the honey. Allah said, the Quran, fihi shifa on the nas. Fihi shifa on the nas. In it, there is shifa. So now from where we got this information? From where? From Allah Azza, right? From the revelation. So we know it is actually a means to get shifa from Allah Azza. So we use, we drink honey. Somebody say, okay, honey is like amulet. No, because honey has been told to us by Allah Azza. Okay.
Okay, the first, the first kind of means. The second kind of means is the means that we come as human beings to know from the Mashallah, from the exper uh, experimental uh, tests, right? Huh? These actually another kind of means, like those who are knowledgeable, they mentioned, the, the scientists, they mentioned reasons behind that, physical reasons. They said, you know what, we experience this to be a cure for that disease. We experience this medical, this medicine to be a cure for that disease. And we tried and we tested and it actually worked. So this is another kind of means. Now we have to, this, that's it, exclusively. Two things one. Now, back to the point of amulets. Have it been told to us by Allah Azza? These amulets? No. Did it go under the exper uh, experiment? Yes. Did it, was it proven, these amulets? These strings, these earrings? No. No, so it's actually, it's, that's not, so it's not, it's not one of these two things. You got it now? Okay, so you say to them, no, this is something from the unseen. And it's, for, it's, it's, not, for, it's not something we have actually touched its you know, benefits. You cannot actually prove it. It's actually, if you wear it, you would get something good in your life. So now we say it's not right because it doesn't have any proof to be right. And don't actually imitate that to the uh, other uh, means that we have come to know uh, through the labs, right? Uh, and actually, subhanAllah, through the, the uh, 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 experimental tests and this and that, no, don't actually compare that to this. He said, believe, because they believe that they are means of protection against the evil, the evil eye and affliction. The idea behind uh, prohibiting such things is that one's heart would be attached to them and instead of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? If it's something from the unseen, even when, you, even when you take medicine, don't say the doctor, give me shifa. No, Allah is the one who gives shifa, right? وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ Ibrahim said that, when I get sick, who actually gives me shifa? Allah Azza wa who cures me, right? Um, seeking their aid and protection against harm. With, as also when you when you when you get hungry and you eat, Allah doesn't who fed you, right? Subhanallah. So this is from Allah Azza wa Jalla, which is a kind of a polytheism or once uh, or one of its causing factors. So either it's in of itself a shirk or a requirement to shirk or a means to shirk or will lead you to fall into shirk. So the sum. The same prohibition applies to seeking a remedy through resorting to uh, sorcerers, uh, the magicians, uh, which which doctors like this word. <laughs> they actually, the subhanAllah, who, who claim to be doctors, but they use only witchcraft. They use witchcraft, right? SubhanAllah. Uh, uh, and subhanAllah, the likes of those people, he mentioned also, uh, the fortune tellers. The fortune to the be so sayers, right? And the fortune tellers, right? Subhanallah. Uh, these people they don't know their, their own fortune. Why they why they turn up and people fortune? Hmm? No, people is foolish. The people who tell the other people fortune, other people future. Hmm. Those people they don't know their own future. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. If they leave the future then when like I subhanallah they are put I am getting money. Mm. Why they are not making their own life like exactly. this? Exactly. Like, SubhanAllah, they are portraying uh, one of those who were actually uh, worshipped. We said Allah Azza people go to his shrine to ask for help. You know? You know that, right? They go to uh, this, right, the grave of this wali. Huh? They ask for, oh, you know, give me shifa, give my son shifa. They say, and SubhanAllah, as if, as if this actually did uh, this wali. He got out of his grave and said to, to them, Oh guys, are you foolish? Your wali has actually died because of a disease. He couldn't cure himself. <laughs> right? So he himself couldn't actually get cured because of that disease that you ask him now to cure your son from. <laughs> right? So how, how, how actually silly 
absurd you are. Right? Right? SubhanAllah. If you can, uh, even SubhanAllah, al Masih al Dajjal, Allah put a clear sign. What was the sign for him to be like? Nothing. He's what? He's, he's one eyed. He's our. One eyed man. And only one eye. Huh? And he would claim to be a Lord and to be, subhanAllah, able to give. Why didn't you cure yourself? Why didn't you give yourself a good, subhanAllah, face and good, subhanAllah, yani body, huh? and healthy body? SubhanAllah. So, but, but even though it would be so big fitna, imagine that. Huh? Okay, that's to, to understand the mindness of people, the mindness, the mentality of people. They wouldn't think like that. When the fitna happens, they would let go for these things and they would focus on others because shaitan wants them to do that so they would still follow him and they believe in him. SubhanAllah. So those uh, employing the jinn too, as a Muslim's creed is more important to him than his health. That's very important. Your aqeedah is much more important than your health. He said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed lawful means of remedy which are useful to one's body, mind, and creed. So here again, when you seek medical treatment, you have to think about your also mind. Don't actually take intoxicant and just, you know, lose your mind because you want to uh, protect or you want to get cured, right? You want to get cured, so just use your mind. You might do, you might end up doing a lot of crimes. The first of which are the glorious Quran. This is actually Quran is a shifa. And the legal Quranic uh, incantations uh, and the legal invocations, Ibn Qayyim Rahmullah said, um, He said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of remedy is performing good deeds, remembering Allah Azza wa supplicating and imploring Him and turning to Him in repentance. The effects of which are much greater than medicine. SubhanAllah, good deeds are much greater than medicine. That Ibn Qayyim said, right? Yet their effects depend on how much one returns to Allah and Allah's acceptance of one's supplication. SubhanAllah. One day, one of the righteous uh, men, he mentioned that Umar al Khattab, he actually put his hand on somebody. And he recited Fatiha and Allah gave him cure, cureness, right? Allah, you know, cured him by Fatiha. So he actually did the same. Huh? He did the same. What did he do? He put his hand and he read at Fatiha. He said, Oh Allah, this is a Fatiha. But where is the hand of Umar? Right? Like, like it depends on who is reciting and which heart is giving this recitation, right? You recite while you are, you know, subhanAllah, يعني, focusing and you are, you know, doing good deeds, right? Or the, just, يعني, you see some women, for example, right? They are not wearing hijab, they are not actually praying well, and they come and ask, okay, I want to know some ayat to recite because I want to actually protect myself from the evil eye and this and that, and subhanAllah, I have nightmares. And the question will be, okay, go, sister, and read this ayat. Okay. But she's supposed to do it before reading ayat. What is the heart of Umar? What is the heart of Umar? What is the heart of the righteous? Right? So, uh, it's, it's actually shifa. Quran is a shifa. But you have to you have to use it properly. Right? Yani, subhanAllah, you have to know how to use it exactly. How to use it exactly. He said, and then just to finish, he said, there is no harm in receiving medical treatment and at hospitals or elsewhere at the hands of qualified you know, doctors who know how to uh, diagnose uh, uh, diseases and treat them. It's an act of the sunnah to visit the sick and the dying. He's going to speak about visiting the sick now, right? Visiting the sick. We're going to talk about that, inshallah, uh, next time. But this is actually another uh, chapter or another, you know, uh, part of this chapter, visiting the sick and the etiquette of that, the etiquette of visiting the sick and the dying uh, wine with he uh, did sallallahu alaihi wasallam that, and he stressed that there are five duties of every Muslim towards his fellow Muslim, among which is visiting him when sick. It's actually his right. He said, "Hakul Muslim al Muslim, khams." 
the right of Muslims uh, upon his subhanAllah fellow Muslim is five, five duties. And he mentioned all of the all these five duties is what when he gets sick, right? When your brother gets sick, you have to visit him. Right? You have to visit him. It's his right upon you. Right? So and you're gonna say when one visits a sick person, one should ask him about his health. And the Prophet used to come close to the sick person he visited and asked him about uh, his health, right? And to also make dua for him, uh, make dua for him, and يعني, uh, say, inshallah. We're going to mention this ad'iyah when you go, and what are the virtues of going and visiting the sick person, inshallah. And we ask Allah Azzawajal to make it easy for us. Uh, any question, brothers? Is there, is there any question before we finish? Hmm? About this kind of, you know, is there any question here? About this. Uh... Especially in our subcontinent. Hmm. Well, um, especially in uh, illiterate people. Hmm. When they see, hmm. they go for those <laughs> graveyards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Big business. Yeah. It's a big business, yeah. Line, line, yeah, you see them, you go to the shrines and the graves and ask for Subhanallah. This is, as you mentioned, this is a shirk. You, you're not supposed to do that. And we ask Allah to, you know, guide Muslims and guide all of us. We ask to forgive our sins. Allah give shifa to those who are sick. Allah give shifa to those who are sick. Allah give shifa to those who are sick. Allah have mercy on Allah have mercy on our brothers and Allah have mercy on all of us. Allah have mercy on all of us. Allah have Allah have mercy on all of us. 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 Allah have Allah have mercy on all of us. Allah have mercy on all of us. Allah have Allah have mercy on all of us. 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 Allah have mercy on